Achieving good yields in your table grape vineyard is important to your profitability and bottom line. Choosing the right rootstock for your vineyard is critical for ensuring good yields of high quality fruit. This short Inno Grape video aims to provide you with some insights and approaches to selecting the right rootstock for your vineyard. When establishing your vineyard, choosing the right rootstock is a key management decision. Rootstocks are important for a variety of reasons. They provide resistance to root pests, such as nematodes and phylloxera. They provide tolerance to adverse soil, physical or chemical conditions, such as high soil salinity, high soil pH, and the extraction of essential nutrients from the soil. And they are an important tool to manage vine vigour to improve yield, quality, and manipulate maturity date. While all table grape growing regions in Australia are currently phylloxera free, most available rootstocks are tolerant to phylloxera. Those with Vitis vinifera in their parentage may be susceptible to phylloxera root attack. Almost all table grape vineyards, especially those growing in sandy soils, have some level of nematode infestation. Nematodes feed on grapevine roots and can interrupt the uptake and flow of water and nutrients in the vine and severely reduce the yield of your vineyards. Nematodes are commonly present in vineyards, therefore choice of nematode resistant rootstock is especially important in replant situations. Rootstocks such as 1103 Paulson are particularly sensitive to the dagger nematode and may not be suitable in certain replant situations. It's also important to ensure that the rootstock selected is compatible with your table grape variety. Poor graft compatibility is caused by inadequate vascular connections at the graft union. It is important to check compatibility issues before finalising your rootstock choice. The choice of an appropriate rootstock for your vineyard site can also be influenced by the irrigation system and water availability on your vineyard the choice of vine spacing and trellis system, the need to either reduce or increase shoot vigour to optimise yield and fruit quality characteristics, and the availability of grafted vines from the nursery. The cost of using vines grafted to rootstock can be as much as three to six times the cost of ungrafted vines, but the inherent benefits they offer may well outweigh the initial cost. Currently, in the Murray Valley Table Grape region, the most commonly used rootstocks are Ramsey, Schwartzmann and 1103 Paulson, accounting for approximately 65% of all plantings in the region. Other minor rootstocks include 5C Telekai, 140 Rugeri, Dogridge and 5BB Coba. Now, let's compare the adaptability of rootstocks to different environmental conditions. First, let's compare the tolerance to salinity. 1103 Paulson, Ramsey and 10114 are much more salt tolerant than ungrafted vines and rootstocks such as 3309C, Harmony and Freedom. In terms of lime tolerance, rootstocks such as 140 Rugeri and 5BB Coba are much more lime tolerant than Ramsey and 5C Telekai. In relation to drought tolerance, rootstocks such as Ramsey, 110 Richter and 140 Rugeri are more drought tolerant than 10114 and Schwartzmann. Finally, vine canopy growth may be influenced by rootstock choice. In general, Ramsey and 1103 Paulson are considered high vigour, while Schwartzmann is considered a moderate vigour rootstock. The vigour imparted by rootstocks is important in table grape vineyards, as excessive shoot growth can cause shading within the grapevine canopy that may result in a reduction in bud fruitfulness, poor colour development in red grapes and delayed berry ripening. A table grape grower's ultimate goal is to improve profitability and the bottom line. The choice of the right rootstock for your vineyard site is crucial to ensure high yields of good quality fruit are achieved on an annual basis. This video is brought to you by InnoGrape, a table grape extension program supported by the Australian Table Grape Association with funding from the Foundation for Rural and Regional Renewal and the William Buckland Foundation.